Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. We've got a gun on the table that actually arrived as a result of a number of requests. We had previously done a 5.7 versus 22 and 22 Magnum video, and there were a lot of people saying, what about 22 TCM? So we bought one. We bought a 22 TCM 9mm convertible. It's a 1911 style frame, and we did a review on that, and everybody liked it, but then everybody started saying, well, what about TCM 9R? So we bought this after trying a Glock conversion barrel. So we bought a Glock 17 conversion barrel, and we had some issues with that. So we bought this map by Rock Island Armory, and this one is chambered in 22 TCM 9R, or TCM 9R. You'll see it a couple different ways. This series also has a 9mm compact just like this, and as well as a 9mm full size. But we had some issues with this also. So what we'll end up doing is we'll talk about the issues. We do have the gun running. We'll talk about the purpose of TCM 9R versus 22 TCM and have a little bit of fun. So let's start with, before we do anything more, we do have an unloaded weapon. Now, as I mentioned, this is TCM 9R, which is just a hair shorter in one grain lighter bullet than 22 TCM. The gun itself, is 7.48 inches long front to back, including that beaver tail, 5.31 inches tall with that flush magazine, and an inch and a half thick. So it's a Glock 19 size gun, though it's a little bit thicker. And it's really kind of based on you know EA Witness or something like a CZ75. You'll see a lot of similarities. And of course, this one's unloaded. You'll see a lot of similarities between the CZs, the EA Witness, and, and others. So it's not a 1911 variant, it is a double action, single action, and but it is, you know, the older hammer fired style design. It's a very comfortable gun to hold. It fits well in the hand. The grip is a little smaller than a 1911 grip. That's part of the concept behind the TCM 9R, is that you have the next size smaller frame. So instead of a 45 size frame, you have a 9mm 40, you know, that, that arena size frame. And the lower is polymer, and it does have some metal rails inside, and of course the steel slide and barrel. The serrations or checkering on it is actually really nice. It's, it's a little different as you wrap around the front, and then the sides, and the non-replaceable back strap, so it's not the same pattern, but you see it does kind of blend. It's grippy enough to hold it in your hand and feel comfortable that it's not going to go anywhere, but it's not at all abrasive. It doesn't hurt to hold this thing, and as you fire it, it doesn't really hurt. One of the things about the whole TCM concept is very little recoil. You're shooting a very low, small projectile very fast, but the recoil on it's minimal, and you see this little flare at the bottom, so it kind of, almost like a gunslinger-style grip, wants to stay in your hand, and you can see I am getting a full three-finger grip on it. The sights on this are kind of nice. It's got a white dot front sight and a blackout rear. Now I'm not a fan of blackout uh, rear sights so this will probably get some dots put on it. Now one thing I will tell you about the sights, the front sight is part of the frame. So you can't change it, do anything with it other than you know you can paint a dot on it. And actually this one here if I remember correctly did actually come with a black front sight and I painted the dot on it. I'd have to double check that. I'll put it, I'll put that in the uh, on screen after we film the video. The rear sight is dovetail, it's adjustable up, windage, and height, so it's a fully adjustable sight, and a couple white dots on the back will make this actually a very nice sight. And we did have no trouble pulling nice groups with this gun. It is a hammer-fired gun, it is double action, single action, as I mentioned, and it does have a safety. So the safety is not a decocker, it's just a safety. So this is meant to be carried, cocked and locked, similar to a 1911. Without a decocker, you can manually decock it by pulling the trigger and lowering the hammer. But the important thing to note is that the drop safety is disabled while you're lower, while you have the hammer pulled or the trigger pulled. So if you don't release the trigger before you put the hammer all the way down, it can actually push the firing pin a little bit forward past the drop safety and disable the drop safety. So even though this is a double action, single action with the safety only design, it's really meant to be carried cocked and locked, and the double action really serves as a second strike, a double strike capability. So you, know, you can pull it and it'll pull the hammer back. You'll see it does have a two slot Picatinny style rail, so lights, lasers, and other accessories are not a problem at all. It has nice serrations at the back, 
Now this has got the low profile slide, the, the rails are actually reversed over a standard slide, just like the CZs, which makes it not a whole lot of area to get a hold of. At the back, the serrations are deep enough to easily get a hold of and pull back on it. Now at the front, there are no serrations and it's quite smooth. So if you've got a strong, strong grip, you can get a hold of it, but otherwise it's really not meant to be pulled from the front. But unlike you know, the blockier slides like you'd find on a Glock that there's a lot of surface area to grab, there's not much to get a hold of up there. Now one thing that's nice about this style is the slide is actually reasonably easy to cock. But if you do have weaker hands and you're having a problem with the slide, you can always thumb the hammer back and that takes half the weight out of it, makes it even easier. So other than having very little area to grab, this is a gun that can be easily adapted to somebody that has weaker hands. And the additional aspect of limited recoil, usually if you've got weaker hands, you're also recoil averse. So the additional benefit of limited recoil kind of helps out. It does have a nice magazine release. It's easy to get to. It does work quite well. You have the magazine installed. It ejects easily and strips right out. Let's talk about the magazine since I happen to have it in my hand. It's a nice, really high quality steel magazine, has an orange follower, and it holds 16 rounds as opposed to other guns in this size category like the Glock 19 that hold 15. Now it does use a 9mm size case so you're roughly going to get about the same rounds on average that you would have in a 9mm other than this has you know plus one. But the advantage is the projectile is lighter, it's less weight of the ammo itself. And it does have a nice polymer base plate that's kind of curved and you'll see the magazine's labeled 9mm. So in the TCM map the map that is 9mm, this is the same magazine. So I happen to have a Glock magazine, or a couple Glock magazines, and some ammo. So let's talk about this ammo a little bit. This is a 22 TCM bottleneck cartridge. This is a TCM 9R. You'll notice that the cartridge, the case is roughly the same, but the projectile is a little bit shorter and a little bit lighter concept behind that is there is a 22 TCM and a Glock 9mm magazine and if I try to load a second one it's not going to work. Why? Because the ammo hits. So you can't load 22 TCM in a Glock or other 9mm magazine but when I go to TCM 9R you'll see that it fits just underneath it. So loading the second round is relatively easy. And what they wanted with this is to be able to get the TCM power in a 9mm size platform. They did come up with conversions for a couple different guns that are out there. We happen to have the Glock 17 one. And then of course their own gun, which is you know the 9mm size platform. So in case you're wondering why on TCM 9R, why would I take a little less velocity and a little less weight of the, of the projectile? It's so that it'll fit in a 9mm size. So let me put the ammo side by side that will allow you to kind of get an idea of what they look like next to each other. And I may have to turn them around a little bit, make it a little easier for you to see. You'll see that the 22 TCM, which is here on the end, a little bit taller, the casings are almost identical, and the projectile's a little pointier. You've got more of a rounded off projectile. And at the moment, these are only available in jacketed hollow point. There's no ball ammo available in the 22 TCM. Now, that might bring into the question, well, what's with 22 TCM at all? Why would we even bother? And it's higher velocity, minimal recoil, and the ability to defeat a number of different types of barriers. Now, this is not ammo piercing ammo, so that, that's not where it's going. But if you're looking at you know, jackets, you know, you've got denim, things like that, a faster, smaller projectile will tend to defeat that and get into defeating the target and some lighter armor it would be able to go through. But unlike some of the 5.7 variants that are really thin and pointy and almost designed to pierce armor, that's not the goal of this. It's more about standard barriers that you would have, you know, windows, things like that. Now you're probably wondering, you know, I've said there's only one variation of it and you know, you're seeing two different variations here. On the TCM 9R, the original ammo was brass. And then they started doing the, the nickel plated. And that actually becomes significant. The brass ammo has a tendency to uh, fail to eject, a bad tendency to fail to eject. So it evolved into the, the, the nickel plated. 
the first ammo that we got for it, we got it at a local gun store. It had been there a while. It's not common. We found out about that when we first started having trouble with the conversion barrel. I ended up finding it online buying a case of the newer. So if you've got one of these, you're definitely going to want to try to start out with this ammo. If you find some at a gun store and it's the brass, you know, leave it there, just you know, move on because the brass isn't going to work as well. That's an issue that seems to be unique to the TCM9R. Now this gun also had issues with that brass ammo. Both the conversion in this gun had issues with the plated ammo as well. And I ended up having to polish the throat of the, the chamber significantly not changing the dimensions of it but really polish it up to get it to work and that was true of both of them so i think there's still a little bit of growing pains going on with tcm 9r trying to get this completely you know bug free and get it working and of course all the ammo comes from arms Corps, which is a rock island uh, subsidiary there's no other ammo currently available for this gun now getting past the initial growing pains getting it working let's get to the point of it does work we do have this gun running nice it's really easy to pull good groups with it, and it's actually a lot of fun to shoot. You get a really loud bang, and you get a big old fireball, so, but almost minimal non-existent recoil. So it's a range stopper. When you shoot this or the 22 TCM, people want to know, what, what is it that guy's shooting? They, they come to check it out. And it's a comfortable, easy to hold gun, and if you like double action, single action, or hammer guns, it works like any of the others, and it's a lot of fun. It's also relatively easy to maintain. I'll show you in a second how to take it apart. It's, it's really easy to work with. A couple more things though to talk about before we take it apart. One of them is initial cleaning. This thing came just gunked in Cosmoline. It was, or the modern equivalent. It was in the magazines. It was in every nook and cranny of the gun. The bag actually that it was in, when I pulled the gun out, it stuck to the bag as I was withdrawing it. I don't know where they expect these to be stored if they're expecting that the warehouses are going to be underwater and they need to protect them from rusting. But man, this thing was a mess. And the same thing was true of the 22 TCM, but not as bad. So I had to go through a couple good deep cleans to get out that gunk out because it was interfering, especially with the magazines. It was making the magazines hang up. So I expect to, you know, do some serious cleaning. From an MSRP standpoint, it's not an expensive gun. MSRP is 429 and you can get it street prices around 380 so it's not an expensive gun now magazines are a little hard to find you pretty much can only get them from rock island there's not a lot of variations on them but one last thing to talk about before we move on is the you know why you know we kind of talked about why 9r versus tcm but why these these at all and i mentioned the velocity these are rated about 1880 feet per second at a 39 grain which is about 304 foot-pounds of muzzle energy. The, a typical 9mm, like the, you know, these are jacketed hollow points, so I chose HST, which is another jacketed hollow point that we use, is 1150 feet per second with a 124 grain cartridge. Now speed makes more difference than weight when it comes to energy. They're 364 foot-pounds of energy. So yes, this is less powerful than a 9mm, you know, an equivalent 9mm, but it's going real fast, again, it you know, it'll defeat some of those barriers, and you get almost the same muzzle energy without, with a lot less recoil without having to give up you know, effectiveness. So let's go ahead and get this thing taken apart so that you can see what the internals look like. Disassembling it is easy. Of course, you verify that it's unloaded. You have to just push this out from this side. And you can use a, you know, a pick, a solid thing like a table, the base plate of a magazine. It does stick a little bit it, you know, initially, but before you do that, you line up these two dots. So you just pull the slide back. Now the slide's real light, so I mean, that's easy. I'm just taking and putting a finger on it and closing it. So once you pull the slide back, which I'm going to do with this one hand, it's a little bit tricky because I'm trying to do it on camera. Normally I wouldn't try to show as I'm doing it. Take the base plate of a magazine, and just give this a push. Once it goes flush like that, then you can grab it from the other side, pull it out. And this is very similar to any of the CZs or anything else that you've dealt with in this realm. And it comes right apart. I'm going to set the slide aside for a second just talk about the frame. Everything in here is pretty well constructed. The machining on Rock Island is good quality, but it's not refined. They don't go the extra step to refine it. You'll see tool marks, you'll see lines, you'll see areas that there's you know, possibly an opportunity for polishing. But what you'll also see 
if I turn it this way, is that all the, the guides are in, internal. They're facing the opposite direction. So unlike a Glock or something like that where they stick up and out, they kind of curl like that, these are going the other way. And when you see the slide, it'll make sense why. There's not a whole lot going on. And of course, fire control group in a double action, single action is a little more complicated. And you're probably wondering, you know, why don't I clean this thing? I have, repeatedly. Those little dots are pieces of brass. And that's, I believe, a tolerance issue that is also somewhat related to some of the stickiness and the failure to extract. So the issues we were having with the different ammo before I polished it was failure to extract. So this thing does a number on the casing. And you'll find some of them are up, right up in here. I could spend the rest of my life cleaning this thing and then give it to you and you'd still be able to find some of those dots. So you clean them out the best you can. I think there is uh, some opportunity for tuning in the overall design and the specifications that probably they'll get through. Now here's the guides. You'll see instead of being on the inside like they usually are, they're on the outside. And here you can see some exact examples of the tolerances. You know, as it's been run, areas are lower and higher. So you're getting, you know, somewhere here and some not where there. And you can even still see the tool marks on it even though this gun's been run. I'm not going to say it's bad quality, but I, I could tell you that they're the, the next step of some other guns, like, you know, a fine 1911 where you get into finish and polish, that step doesn't happen. It runs through the machine, it's manufactured, it's brought into spec, and then, and then they're done. So you may find that the instance you get has some break-in issues or need to have a little bit of attention paid to it. But again, you know, we're a $380 gun. It's not a $1,000 1911. It's a sub $400 gun. So, you know, that's what you get. It does have a nice steel guide rod. It, it is not captive, but the tension on it is so low that it doesn't fight with you. It's easy to deal with. And one important note is the spring doesn't stick out very far. A lot of times you'll get them where you get a guide rod like that and they're a real pain to put back together because this spring wants to get wiggly. The guide rod is short enough and the spring is light enough, you can see it, it just a finger touch. So putting it back together and you'll see when I go to do it, it's not a big deal. Pull the barrel out. Now the feed ramp was polished when we got it where I ended up doing the more additional work. It may be a little bit difficult to get enough light in there. It is the chamber. And you'll see, see if we can try this with a flashlight, see if I can get a little bit of light in there so that you can see the chamber. Let's try this one more time, see if we can get enough light in there that you can see the chamber. You can see a little bit of shine in there. Yeah, it's not liking that. So basically I, what I'll do is I'll sum it up is the chamber was rough. And, and that's part of why it was hanging up. And now if I turn it around the other way, and this is why I couldn't light it from the other end, because you'll see it's a 22 on the other side. kind of looks like a cannon barrel. The rifling is well done and nice, and we had no problems with you know, stabilization or any of the other aspects of it. But even here on the end, you can see that there's no finish work done. It's just, you know, they finish it, it's too spec, and it is what it is. So you may have to do a little bit of you know, tender loving care to get it to work right, or you might be lucky enough to get one that you know, the tolerances are perfect from day one. Same thing in here, it's quality machining, it's quality materials, but there's not a lot of extra finish work done. It does have a drop safety, so it has a firing pin block, so it is considered to be a drop safe weapon when used as intended. And you'll see more of those little specs, which they're, they're nearly impossible to get out of there. There's a few right there. And when you're done shooting at the range, the gun will be absolutely infested with them. So let's go ahead and put it back together, which is easy to do. Drop the barrel in. The recoil spring lines up easy, as I mentioned. And then you want to make sure that that little bump just drops into that little valley. It does it. You, know, you don't want to have it pushed down like this, which is easy to do. Then it won't go together right. It needs to be just sitting right there. And then grab the frame. Line it up, bring it back. And what you want to do is bring it back not all the way so that you can see light through that hole drop this in to capture the barrel then you can slide it back enough to line up and pop it in place and of course all of those operations are easier when you're turning it towards your face you know you would turn it sideways towards your face where you're looking at it when you're doing it rather than being on camera 
Overall, you know, I have talked a little bit about some problems we had with this. We got through that. We got it running. You know, I don't mean that to be it's not a gun worth buying. Now, if this is your first gun and you haven't got experience with guns, this might be one to stay away from as a first gun. If you've had a little experience, you can do some a little bit of polishing. You're willing to tolerate a little bit of initial issues and, and work your way through it. For 380 bucks, you get a lot of fun and a easy to shoot well you know, easy to stay on target and easy to control gun that actually packs quite a bit of power. It's ammo is a little bit of expensive and of course you know you saw a lot of brass in it because we were trying to use up this brass ammo even with the nickel plated it'll do that it's just there'll be the little flakes will be a different color and with the nickel plated the flakes will be metallic looking they'll be silverish looking no your gun's not coming apart that's just the ammo I would recommend this as a fun gun. I don't know if it's mature enough to recommend as a personal defense weapon, though you would, you know, once you got it working reliably where you had, you know, comfort factor that the gun was going to be reliable, your specific one was going to be reliable, it'd be a good home defense weapon and everything else. Though I would be a little hesitant to want to fire this thing indoors. That bang is loud, you know, and I know all guns are loud, but this thing is seriously loud and it might not be something that you want going off in a confined space like a bedroom. And ergonomically, it's a comfortable gun. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, share. If you do, click that bell. And thank you to our Patreon supporters and our YouTube subscribers for supporting the channel. Thank you.